Good morning. Today is Saturday the 19th of November and it's the feria in the second last day of the year. No, beg your pardon, it's not quite true. It's the day before the last Sunday of the year. Um, tomorrow is the Feast of Christ the King, the last Sunday of the year. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. First reading continues in the Apocalypse, chapter 11, 4 to 12. I, John, heard a voice saying, These, my two witnesses, are the two olive trees and the two lamps that stand before the Lord of the world. Fire can come from their mouths and consume their enemies if anyone tries to harm them. And if anybody does try to harm them, he will certainly be killed in this way. They're able to lock up the sky so that it does not rain as long as they are prophesying. They're able to turn water into blood and strike the whole world with any plague as often as they like. When they have completed their witnessing, the beast that comes out of the abyss is to make war on them and overcome them and kill them. Their corpses will lie in the main street of the great city, known by the symbolic names of Sodom and Egypt, in which the Lord their God was crucified. Men out of every people, race, language and nation will stare at their corpses for three and a half days, not letting them be buried, and the people of the world will be glad about it and celebrate the event by giving presents to each other, because these two prophets have been a plague to the people of the world. After three and a half days, God breathed life into them, and they stood up, and everybody saw it happen and was terrified. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven say to them, Come up here. And while their servants, their enemies were watching, they went up to heaven in a cloud. The Word of the Lord. In the Gospel of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 20, 27 to 40. Some Sadducees, those who say there's no resurrection, approach Jesus and put this question to him. Master, we have it from Moses in writing that if a man's married brother dies childless, the man must marry the widow to raise up children for his brother. Well then, there's seven brothers. The first, having married a wife, died childless. The second and then the third married the widow. And the same with all seven. They died with leaving no children. Finally, the woman herself died. Now, at the resurrection, to which of them will she be wife, since she's been married to all seven? And Jesus replied, The children of this world take wives and husbands, but those who are judged worthy of a place in the other world and in the resurrection of the dead do not marry, because they can no longer die, for they are the same as the angels, and being children of the resurrection, the sons of God. And Moses himself implies that the dead rise again, in the passage about the bush, where he calls the Lord the God of where he calls the Lord the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now he is God not of the dead, but of the living, for to him all men are in fact alive. Some scribes then spoke up, Well put master, they said, because they would not dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. We had this Gospel reading a couple of Sundays ago um, and it's all about the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Sadducees don't believe in everlasting life, the, Sad the Pharisees do and the Sadducees come up with this crazy story about the, the woman marrying seven brothers and all of them dying child, well, without giving her a child and then when she dies who will she be married to in heaven? Of course Jesus replies and says there's no giving or taking in marriage in heaven. But they're trying to trap Jesus. But he comes back with a statement based on the Old Testament, based on the writings of the Torah, their own writings, interpreting Moses. And remember, they began by saying, Moses told us the law. And then he quotes Moses, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, when at the burning bush Moses asked him, I am the God of the living. Therefore, they are living. First reading is very complex. It has a transitional point in the book of the, the Apocalypse, the Revelation. 
and there's so many Old Testament references that you need to know about to make sense of it. The two olive, uh, olive trees and the two lampstands refer to the king and the prophet. Sorry for the interruption. So the two olive trees and the two lampstands refer to the king and the prophet after their return from the exile and they're given powers to rule the world temporarily. That three and a half is half seven. Seven is completion, three and a half therefore is incompletion. So it's the temporary time before the end. The place that's referred to for Christ's crucifixion um, is uh, Sodom and Egypt. Um, but it's a place neither is correct. Um, it's saying that uh, the crucifixion happens outside the place and time originally where it happened. And the power of the prophets, the, these two uh, olive trees and lampstands, are those of Moses who was able to bring down plagues uh, and all sorts of trouble uh, until the time came for completion. And so we hear towards the end that Christ will come. Um, and therefore it will reach seven. So as I say, it's a complex reading, but it's all about the triumph of Christ, um, being able to bring about the, service, the salvation of the world and each, of our, each one of us. Um, so it fits in with the feast we're going to start tomorrow, Christ the King, King of the world, King of time, uh, King of freedom. Um, so it's a preparation day today, preparing for tomorrow's great feast, the Feast of Christ the King. We turn to our bidding prayers. The response is, open to us the treasures of your love. Christ became man to make us sons and daughters of God, and he intercedes for us before God our Father. Let us thank him for his loving mercy and pray. Open to us the treasures of your love. You have enlightened us in baptism. We consecrate our day to you. Open to us the treasures of your love. Fill us with praise of you today. May we take your word with us wherever we may go. Open to us the treasures of your love. Teach us to respond to your word like Mary our mother. May your word be fruitful in us. Open to us the treasures of your love. Give us courage when things go wrong. Strengthen us with faith in you with hope in your promises and with love of your will. Open to us the treasures of your love. And Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let the splendour of the resurrection light up our hearts and minds, Lord, scattering the shadow of death and bringing us to the radiance of eternity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless. Have a good day.